on Tough Track. Kong tries to prove that he's the king of monster truck racing. The glamour race is Bigfoot against the Gravedigger. And Hort powers the game on the pulling track. Stay tuned. Again, everyone, Scott Douglas with Army Armstrong and Chris Chapman in Bowling Green, Ohio at the Wood County Fairgrounds, where last week Equalizer was our winner, but King Kong, a truck brought out of retirement, was a big story. He was super fast, but broke. Now, Steve Kane has actually had less than 24 hours to get it fixed and ready for tonight. Army Armstrong is checking up to see if Kane is going to have Kong ready. The big story last week, a truck out of Texas known as King Kong. Now, if you follow the circuit, you know the truck has been retired for about five years. We've been watching the sister ship of the Awesome Kong. That wasn't the case. The awesome Kong's being rebuilt. They brought King Kong out of retirement. He said quick qualifying time was dominating the whole round of competition. Then he had all kind of problems. Let's check with the driver, Steve Kane, and find out if they're going to be able to make it back in the competition this week. Steve, give me an update on exactly the situation of the truck. Well, last night we broke uh, both drive shafts and uh, transfer case. Uh, this morning we had to go to Grand Rapids, Michigan, pick up uh, some transfer case parts and uh, some drive shafts, get them made up. Uh, we got the front drive shaft in, we got the transfer case put back together. Right now we're putting in the rear drive shaft, and uh, we're going to be ready. Okay, we're 20 minutes from start. Can you win it? Well, I, I, it's what I come up here for, you know. I feel uh, I would have won last time, but, uh, you know, that's, that's the break. Well, we're going to be keeping an eye on the truck out of Texas. And remember, the 250 miles he had to drive today, that's peanuts compared to the thousands of miles he had to drive just to get here. Let's check with Chris Chapman and find out about today's pulling action. Thanks, Army. I'm sitting in the stands right now with some of the hardiest monster truck fans in the world. Why? Well, it's about 50 degrees, cold and damp here in Bowling Green, Ohio. But let me tell you, we're getting ready to bring you some sizzling pulling action from Fishersville, Virginia. Tim Engler and Mission Impossible will try and defend their 1989 National TNT All-American Pulling Series Championship title. And it's going to be some great action coming up later here on Tough Track. Back to you, Scott. And we're going to look forward to that great pulling action, Chris, right now. These aren't the monsters, just the mini monsters getting things ready to go at the Wood County Fairgrounds in Bowling Green, Ohio. Qualifying is done. Our first round of competition is set and ready to get after it in Bowling Green. The fast qualifier, Gary Porter's Carolina Crusher. He gets a bye. Then Bigfoot will take on King Kong. That's a Ford showdown. No problem is out against Clydesdale. The Auto Value King Crush meets Mopar Magic. Grave Digger qualified well. He'll race the nightlife. And then Wild Hair takes on Buffalo Tremor. Equalizer goes up against Jesse Berge and playing for Keith. Tough Track is brought to you by Nintendo, makers of the Nintendo Entertainment System and the world's largest and most exciting library of great games. Nintendo, now you're playing with power. Back on Tough Track, we are ready to do battle side-by-side -side monster truck racing with the superstars, the greatest in the sport today, hooking up on the TNT Monster Truck Challenge. We talked about him bringing the big truck out of retirement, and he has run strong. King Kong did not qualify especially well. Now he has to race Bigfoot and John Pyatt and Army Armstrong. King Kong, you know, that qualifying shot was his first out of the gate with all the drive shafts and everything put back together. Now he has to let it all hang out. Yeah, but the story here is in the blue truck, John Pyatt has to get through a rail. He's got to beat Kong. Kong's going to really go after him hard. The reason is, Foot's trying to close in on the national championship point lead. Not to be the case. King Kong is definitely alive and well in Bowling Green. Look at that. He knocks off Bigfoot right here and right now. And you know, Jeff Dane, the owner of the King Kong truck, has been battling Bob Chandler's trucks for a long, long time. And I know that's got to be sweet for Jeff to be able to watch Steve Kane drive home that winner. That run might haunt Bigfoot in the World Championship point chase before the year's over, Scott. Well, 
Bigfoot's got a shot to come back, but I'll tell you, he's going to have to be the absolute fast loser. Only one fast loser is going to make it back. So Bigfoot may be on the trailer, or he may still have a shot to come back. King Kong literally just manhandling. Look at this. Steve Kane is so comfortable with this truck. He drives it hard, completely clears everything, and he's got an engine that's not 100%. Something's coming out the right side of that block, Scott. Steve Kane and King Kong takes the victory. Well, there's no love lost in monster trucks, especially between two camps, Jeff Dane's camp and Bob Chandler's camp. You just scored a major upset in this sport, and I know it's got to be tickling you to death right now. Yeah, anytime you go out there and beat Bigfoot, you know, you, you're doing something pretty good. And you just flat beat him. I mean, it, he had a good run. You had a better run. It looked great. Yeah, uh, you know, I broke my drive shaft and everything last night, so on qualifying, you know, I took it kind of easy, and... And I really didn't want to race him first round, but, you know, that's the way it comes up, you know, when you qualify like that. You could have really screwed him up in this national championship. Yeah, uh, right now I'm like fourth or fifth, you know, and I'm trying my best to get right up there at the top. Well, you're going into the next round. He might be able to come back as a quick loser. We'll have to wait and see, but good luck in that next round. We know you're going to be there. Thank you, Arnie. Again, I want to point out that some weeks on Chuck Tracks, you'll see two or three of the fastest losers come out of the first round and into the quarterfinals. But since there are 13 trucks making the call tonight, only one fast loser comes back. Bigfoot hopes that's him, but he's got to dodge a lot of bullets. The first one comes up here. It's Mopar Magic, the Dodge, challenging the Auto Value King Crunch GMC. Scott Stevens having no problem at all in that far lane. He looks like he's got the hot hand this evening going into this round. Now, we've been talking about chassis. This is another crew that's working experimenting with some chassis they seem to have the truck ironed out front to rear but where they're having problem with the suspension on this truck is it moves left to right if you remember last week it landed and went off center and he was disqualified in last week's competition i believe they've got it figured out tonight scott obviously running very well scott stevens the auto value king crunch i mean we can see underneath it tell us what you're talking yeah, about yeah look where the grill is you see the orange shock absorbers those are cantilever type shocks they just give you more travel. In other words, they let it settle smoother and land softer. That's a suspension trick. Scott Stevens, a winner, and now we're going to look at the grave digger. Dennis Anderson brings it out of Kill Devil Hills, North Carolina, and he'll take on Dave Wysorek's Nightlife Chevrolet from Grand Island, Nebraska. The digger has been well documented, had a lot of problems keeping her running in 1990. Qualified pretty well, and he's got the red lights on. That normally means he's ready to go 100%. You're going to be looking at two styles of driving. Finesse is going to come out of the lane closer to the camera. The guy you're looking at there, he goes about it like a bull in a china closet. He's going to mash the motor. If it stays together, it'll stay together. If it doesn't, you're going to see one super run. Side by side off the first one. Scott, what does it look like? Gray Digger's going to pull it on the second one. Dennis Anderson looking strong, gets the win. Some smoke out of the back, but I didn't see any parts flying out. Dennis Anderson's your winner as he gets the victory in the Grave Digger. We're going to get a look at it one more time, and let's get an isolated view right here, Army, of the Grave Digger run. One of the things you notice about the Grave Digger, you got to remember, this truck is different because the engine sits behind the driver. It flies different. It lands different. Right now, the truck looks like he's got the hot setup. Let's see if he can move to the next round. Grave Digger gets that first round victory. Here's Army with Dennis Anderson. Dennis, in order to get to the final, you got to get through the first couple of rounds. I believe we're looking at a new Dennis Anderson tonight. You thinking different? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm trying to save the truck until we get running, you know, run against some fast trucks. And uh, I watched Dave in, uh, in qualifying. And I watched him some uh, the day before. And, you know, he's, he's running good and consistent. But I don't know, in qualifying, I think he had a little bit too much fuel. So I, I didn't figure he was going to give me too hard of a, a run there. How about your truck specifically? You've been having some problems with it. The truck sounds great tonight. It looks great. You know, is this going to be the night for you? I don't know. I hope so. It needs to be. Dennis Anderson. And by the way, we're going to look at the points because that was an important run in terms of position for Dennis Anderson and the Grave Digger getting a head-to-head -head victory over Dave Weisdorf's Nightlife Chevrolet. I'll show you what we mean in just a moment, but first let's check on the current TNT Monster Truck Challenge at the top where Equalizer comes in, leading by 30 points over Bigfoot. Then it's King Crush, the Auto Value Special, Carolina Crusher, the awesome Kong truck of Steve Kane, rounding out the top five. Now, after we move into the second five, it's USA 1 sitting in the number six spot. But Grave Digger and Nightlife have been going toe-to-toe -to -toe battling for that seventh spot. Nightlife was just about to catch it, but tonight, Dennis Anderson able to stretch it out a little bit with the victory over Nightlife. Outlaw and the Buffalo Tremor round out the top ten. Back on top 
Tough Track, Scott Douglas, Army Armstrong, Chris Chapman with the TNT Monster Truck Challenge racing on hallowed grounds for truck and tractor pulling, that being the Wood County Fairgrounds in Bowling Green, Ohio, where all the pulling superstars come every August. But right now, the Monster Truck Superstars head-to-head. -head. It's the Buffalo Tremor, Johnny K, against Wild Hair and Starvin Marvin Smith. Side by side, this ought to be an excellent matchup as Richie Schaefer gets ready to start. Whoa, well, we got a great start on the other side, Wild Hair. Hey, the word we're getting from Tracy Smart, the time and crew, we've got a disqualification on the start. And the Buffalo Trimmer looks like he's going to come back. We're going to have to catch that on replay. It looks like he just cut what they call in the sport a good light to me. we got a replay coming up. Let's call it, Scott. Marvin Smith from the Wild Hair is being disqualified as Army documented for jumping the light. Now, Richie Schaefer's at the starting line. What you'll want to watch as we look at the replay is when that Christmas tree, kind of modified Christmas tree, goes from red to green. And I think Marvin Smith is going to be real unhappy. Let's take a look. Now watch for the light to go green and Marvin to move. Watch. Mm -mm -mm. Boy, that's an awful close call. Army's with the guy who gets the win. Johnny K, you're going to be coming back. I understand you weren't aware of the red light situation. Well, I wasn't. Uh, I, I couldn't tell on the line. It looked like he left a little early, but I wasn't sure. What about the fuel problem? You've definitely got a problem with fuel. Yeah, we do. We, they, they changed the cubic inch rules. Uh, we used to run alcohol, and it, it, they keep changing these rules in the middle of the season. They made us run on gas, and it, I just can't seem to get it right. Heavy air, a lot of cool air out here. It's, it's spooky, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's been changed all afternoon. I've been trying to dial in this afternoon. We had it running right, and it's changed again, and we just can't get, seem to dial it in right. But we'll take it any way we can get it. Let's look at the start again, as right now that's the controversial man on the point. Richie Schaefer actually threw the switch but didn't make the call. The call came from the video replay man, Tracy Smart, up in their booth, and he's saying that he jumped the light, and I don't know, it just... No, I'll tell stuff. you what, Scott, he just cut a good light. I can understand the call, but we go back and look at it, we've got the privilege to do that, it was good. Marvin, a beautiful run, but one small problem, jump that light. I know, that's what I just heard. Uh, apparently the reaction time on this truck is so quick, when, I, when I, I thought I saw the light change, apparently it didn't, or I just tapped it and it just jumped. But a lot of times on the, on the older motors, you had reaction time. There's no reaction time here. When you hit it, you're gone. What does it make you feel like after such a beautiful path? Well, you know, I just have to take it. I consider myself a professional, just the way it is. I don't know if Marvin Smith, between the actual race and this airing of Tough Tracks, has ever seen that call and this run. If this is the first time you're seeing it, Marvin, uh, he's probably a little upset. It was an awfully close call, and like he says, he's a professional and has to live with an army, but I'm sure he doesn't agree with it. I guarantee you, he was thinking about that light all the way back to Missouri. Look who's coming back out. We got a brand new paint job on this little lady here. Well, playing for keeps is a truck that Jesse Berge, in a non-TNT event, actually rolled recently. He's got her back together. New paint job, but he has to take on the world champion, Equalizer. He also changed brands. He went over to GMC. Let's see what's going to happen. He runs a smaller engine. Berge takes Berge taking a bad bounce. He's in trouble. He's trying to power out Scott. He pulls it back. Whoa, you talk about some heads up driving. Jesse Berge just saved his hide right there. Masterful save by Jesse Berge. And the time for Jesse Berge is exactly the same as Bigfoot's. But Bigfoot is going to get to come back as the fast loser because Bigfoot set the time first, not Berge. And to beat him, he would actually have to beat the time, not equal it. Chris is caught up with Jesse Berge to talk about the run. Jesse Berge, I hope you were buckled up because that was one wild ride. That was a good one. It appears that you and Bigfoot have got the same fast loser time, but he, he qualified first, so it looks like they might bring him back. How do you feel about that? Because if he ran it first, he gets it. That's the rules. But, you know, we pushed it as hard as the truck could go. You know, I hung on for all I had down there. I figured I was going to lose it. I'm just glad it's still on all four wheels and I could come back. What was going through your mind? You could obviously tell you were out of control. Well, actually, the truck was out of control. I did a pretty good job getting it back, I thought. All I could think of is don't do what it did five weeks ago and roll and destroy the truck again. Good luck to you. Thank you. Scott, one thing I want to bring out here. He's running about a thousand less horsepower than Bigfoot and runs the same time. It's time to look at it again because it's the crunch of the week. Hold on to your seats for the amazing crunch of the week. Brought to you by Micro Machines. The number one colossally collectible vehicles in the world. If it doesn't say Micro Machines, it's not the real thing.
Jesse Berg, he's playing for keeps. We're going to see it again. Army takes it. What it does, he's running a smaller engine on carburetors. It's quicker. It's more responsive. The bounce on the final set is not a good bounce. You see him coming up. The front end nose is over. It kicks. Okay, he throttles on it, trying to pull it back out. It's going to kick back the other way. He's got to throttle again. The natural instinct is to hit the brake. Had he done it, it had gone on his head. Bergie is a pro. We call that a Charmin ride in this sport, and you can tell why. Outstanding save for Jesse Bergie on the Crunch of the Week. John Moore, the no problem Ford Bronco from Lafayette, Tennessee, will take on another wild eyed Southern boy, Bennett Clark out of Powder Springs, Georgia, and the Clydesdale Chevrolet. John Moore runs a short wheelbase Ford combination earlier tonight in qualifying. He had a good run. He's coming out of the same lane he's running right now. It was a, what you might call a loose qualifying run for John Moore and no problem as he gets a whole bunch of bounce and a little turn at the end of it here. Right turn, Clark. Come on back to us, John. He's okay and ready to go in first round competition as he stages it up there. Now, John, again, will try and take on a Clydesdale truck that has been battling jinxes all year. Okay, the problem we got today, fuel. He can't get the horsepower to come out of the engine. One of the things we're seeing now, everybody is pretty steady on their engines. Where they're experimenting is on their chassis. That's why we're getting all these real weird bounces. Look at this. John Moore comes back with a short wheelbase, no problem for it. He goes to the next round, but look at the bounce that the truck is taking. Boy, really, he kind of got a, a, I don't know, maybe a trampoline effect is the best way to put it, because he kept coming up, kept coming down, finally gets it settled down as he gets the victory over a Clydesdale truck that was never able to go in this one, that's for sure. But all the bounce comes off the front of the truck. The rear suspension is tight, the front is loose. Watch the pogo stick effect. Bounce, 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 it's all the front. He's going to bounce his way into the quarterfinals. John Moore wins it in no problem. Well, coming up, Tim Engler begins the best of his national championship. It's Mission Impossible time. More monster truck action a little later on Duck Tracks. Right now, we pick up the first point pull of the year for the super modified tractors on the TNT All-American Pulling Series at the Augusta Expo Land in Fishersville, Virginia. And first to hook is Freddie Freeman, Fast Freddie out of Wadesville, Indiana, and the mean mistreat. Well, Fast Freddie relies on the awesome horsepower generated by the Chevrolet engines. You know, it's a right hand. We're going to throttle. That's a throttle right in front of the screen. A lot of people don't realize they use hand throttles on these tractors. Freeman is the first to come out. Remember, the track is what they call greasy. That means it's slippery on top, but these tires that they have on these vehicles are cut down about an inch and an inch and a half, and they should get a bite. All right, already you can tell these tractor guys are going to get this thing figured out. Fred Freeman taking it out in mean this Streeter. It's a good-looking pull. Not a full pull, but a good-looking pull nonetheless. 285 and 6 inches. Well, we may get a full pull before this thing's over. These guys will get this track figured out, I guarantee you, before the day's over. Somebody's going to bang it out the back door. Well, if somebody's going to bang it out, you'd think this has got to be the favorite to do so. The defending national champion, Tim Engler and Mission Impossible. You know, I've seen freight trains that don't have this much horsepower, Scott. Angler's out of Princeton, Indiana, and, you know, he uh, is responsible, Army, and you maybe you could talk about it a little bit, about a lot of the tractors that we see out here. He's got a hand in a bunch of them. Yeah, the Angler chassis is the premier chassis in the sport, but, you know, that's in the pulley sport. He also has a chassis shop. He does sprint car chassis. He does two-wheel drive pulling chassis. So, Angler is an innovator in this class. He went over to the Chevrolet engine. He made a major change over to Chevrolet, and, oh, my goodness, look at this. Engler keeps a nose down in the dirt and bangs it right out of here. A full pull for Tim Engler and Mission Impossible. Kept the front end on the track. Now, everybody else will do exactly what he did. Engler literally out thought the track. Boy, he had a good run there. And I'll tell you what, let's go over to Tim himself and find out if the muddy track's a problem for him. Well, it is a problem. If you noticed right there at the end, why we was backing out of the throttle to try to make sure the tires would stay hooked up and get on out the end. So I don't know. It's a question. It is still very slick. We kind of took a gamble starting all the motors. We were just about to leave one shut off. So right now.
right now we feel real good, but I think you'll see some more out there. One who could easily join him comes up next. The John Powell Powell Special has been having a great year in non-points events. Now it's time to make it count with the points and the big bucks on the line. One of the big differences in Powell's vehicle. The frame is built by Tim Engler, but he relies on the Chrysler hemispherical engine to make the horsepower and all that horsepower. Look at this. He's going after Engler. He's out of here. That's two. That's two that's already figured it out, Scott. I think he's really going to take it in further on down the road. John Powell with a powerful pull. Watching it again. Here he comes, Army. You know, a lot of people think you just hook onto the sled and pull straight. Look at this. He is working up on that rascal. Oh, good camera shot. I'm getting out of here when that happens. <laughs> I guarantee it. John Powell and Powell Pulling has forced the pull off with Tim Angler's Mission Impossible. Another guy with that type of capability is right here, Mike Piper, and just add dirt. Angler's out of here with the Chevrolet for horsepower. Powell comes and bangs it out the back door with the Chrysler. Look what's coming out now, the hybrid Aries engine. These engines are made for one thing, make horsepower, and Piper does not have to take a minute. He goes straight for the throat. He's trying to get out the back door, too, and he does it. Put three into the pull-off as all of a sudden it looks easy. Mike Piper taking just add dirt right out the door. Piper goes for the throttle real quick, powers the front end up. Now, like I say, this track is greasy, it's slippery, and these guys have already got it figured out. Well, if they've got it figured out, maybe this next fellow will, too, because he's one of the best there is. Ohio Gold is John Heilman from Rockford, Ohio. Heilman, really strong in the sport. He drives a two-wheel drive competition plus a modified tractor. Has won national championships before. Follows the circuit with his wife and two sons. They're the crew chief. He's got his work cut out for him. He's doing what he has to do. The front end looks on him a little bit. Now it settles back down. Heilman with the Chevrolet horsepower. Oh, he's there, too. He is gone. So when we go to the pull-off, we're going to look at four big, bad, super-modified tractors here at Fishersville, Virginia. It's going to be a super pull-off, Army. It'll definitely be a super pull-off. But what amazes me is they're still turning these wheels over 150 miles an hour on this slippery track. A little bit later, four go to the pull-off. It ought to be a dandy to see who comes out on top in the first point pull for the summer of 1990 on the TNT All-American Pulling Series. But when we come back, we're going back to the monster truck action in Bowling Green, Ohio, and it's going to be time to watch the quarterfinal round of competition. And we have eight of the best in the world ready to hook up and go at it. Here's the way they're going to match up when we return to the Wood County Fairgrounds. Our first quarterfinal matchup is one that is really going to have the rivalries going. Fans on each side of the camp are going to get up and scream. You're either for the Carolina Crusher Chevrolet or you're for the King Kong Ford. That's going to be our first matchup of the quarterfinal round. Then we'll see another Ford coming out into action. John Morris, no problem, takes on the Auto Value King Crunch GMC. Bigfoot did get in as the fast loser. He takes on Gravedigger. You talk about a marquee showdown. There it is. And then Buffalo Trevor comes out to go up against the equalizer. Dennis Anderson's Gravedigger as a warning for Bigfoot. We come back. Bigfoot's going down. Stay tuned. Bunch of autographs, John Pyant, the pilot of the Bigfoot Ford, gets a second life. We'll see him in the quarterfinal round, coming back as a fast loser. The man he lost to, the King Kong Ford, who is looking so good. But now, he takes on the Carolina Crusher Chevy. And lately, Army, Crusher's been rolling. He's been in the Monster Smash Finals a couple weeks in a row. One, two weeks ago, was a runner-up last week. Yeah, but I'll tell you, the guy you got to watch today is going to be in the other lane. Steve Kane. It's almost like there's something strange going on. He feels so good in his truck. The truck handles so well. He drives Kong so much better than he ever drove the awesome Kong vehicle. Let's see what King Kong does now. Because Steve Kane is at home. Boy, and the office is open. Look at his that. He manhandled the Carolina Crusher. Wow. But he still has something coming out the right side of the engine. Yeah, you're, on the, you're definitely on that. But the main thing, Army, is that... I don't know what it is. There's some kind of yeah. magic going on because yeah. he just running superb. Like I said, it's almost 
we were talking earlier, it's almost like a new pair of shoes compared to a good old comfortable pair of shoes. He likes this truck. He feels safe in this truck. He's not afraid to attack in this truck. He just goes round after round after round, but I can't figure out what's coming out of that block. Well, Army, there he is. See what it is. I tell you what, you're looking back at the truck. It's running good. It's sounding good, but there's something coming out of the right side of that block. What is it? Uh, well, what I think it is, Army, is the, the uh, oil dipstick keeps coming out, and it keeps blowing uh, water. Okay, we just received word from the crew. Okay, other than that, everything's go? Oh, yeah, truck's running fine. We're down to four. You're one of them. We'll see you in that next round. All right, thank you, Army. No problem, the Ford Bronco out of Lafayette, Tennessee will take on the Auto Value King Crunch in the GMC from Woodlands, Texas, and Scott Steve. Listen to this truck. John Moore is stepping up on a horsepower. Listen, you can tell that he's going after this GMC. He's not going to roll over one bit. King Crunch better be on his toes. Scott Stevens tries to get a good lead out of that far lane, but Moore is coming on. John Moore does it! Look at that! Call that an upset. Yeah, well, like I say, Moore came loaded for better. I don't think Stevens took this guy seriously. I think you're right. I think Scott Stevens might not have given John Moore his due, and uh, no problem Ford beat him. A little bit of brain fade on the starting line. He waited just a second, and believe me, John Moore took advantage of that and parlayed it into a big, big win. Well, as you look at the end of the replay, an army, he's still bouncing like you were talking about, but boy, it didn't cost him. Here's the ISO on the Auto Value King Crunch. He just never got it going in time. No, he made a good run. He just left late. That's all there is to it. He just got beat on the starting line. Here he comes over. It's not a bad-looking run. It just wasn't fast enough. John Moore gets the victory in that no problem for beating that truck, the Auto Value King Crunch. John Moore is coming out. Look how he comes out of the truck, too. It's actually a little stepladder effect toward the back. Army's over there with him, and he'll be talking to him right now. Army? John Moore, that had to be one of the best races you've ever run. Felt good. You're going to get King Kong in the next round, too. Bad boy Fords. Uh, what's going through your mind on it? I'll have to go back, get ready for it, tighten a couple bolts. I think we can do it. He's going to go to the left lane. I know you're going to go to the right lane. There's not going to be any excuses on this one. The best truck's going to win that next round, right? There's no doubt about it. Yeah, that's, I, I picked this lane tonight, and that's the one I'm going to live with. John Moore with a big smile. Scott Stevens isn't smiling. He's with Chris. Scott, you got to be shocked getting beat by no problem. Yeah, he was running real good all night, and we stayed with the same setup we had with Mopar Magic, and, you know, we just weren't set up to go fast enough to beat him, and, you know, John's running real good, and, I, you know, I'd like to see him win the whole thing tonight. Well, very candidly put by Scott Stevens. He says he didn't sell John Moore short. He just got beat. Yeah, well, that's the name of the game. You know, John Moore in his interview with me said he's going to live in that right lane. You can also die in that right lane if you don't stay on your toes in this sport. You know, if if we decided just to sell some tickets tonight, Army, I think we've got to pack the house just for this one race. Grave Digger against Bigfoot. I know we could, because I'm backing about 20 feet away from where I normally stand. I know what's going to come down the pike. These guys are going to go after each other like two old street fighters. But John Pyatt jumps out on Anderson. Oh, Bigfoot. He hammered him. John Pyatt puts the Grave Digger on the trailer, and he does it with no doubt remaining. No, he, he literally manhandled him from the word go. That may be the best run I've seen John Pyatt lay down at Bigfoot, and Grave Digger just never got it going. You know, Pyatt is a, he's not new to the national touring sport. Did you know for two years he was the top amateur BMX bicycle rider in America? Then he went to work for Bob Chandler driving Bigfoot. This kid has been around. He does have a resume. Great run for John Pyatt. Army Armstrong's going to talk to him. John, you and the Bigfoot crew are back into this thing through the break rule, the quick losing rule, but you can still win it. Is that still in your mind? Yeah, hopefully uh, we finally got the thing figured out. It seemed like it ran really well that last race, and hopefully for Bigfoot to go all the way to the end. What did you figure out? Uh, we regenerated a little bit. It's getting cooler as the night goes on. I think that might have been stumping us. I, I don't know for sure, but I think we got it figured out. Well, we're down to four, and you're one of them. We'll see you in the next round. Okay, thank you, Army. Well, Army, I'll tell you, John really looked fired up. Now, now, as we look at the Grave Digger on the ISO, there's no question it sounds good. You can see some smoke coming out, some steam coming out of one of those back exhausts. Obviously, some problems. Chris Chapman's over with Dennis Anderson, and the engine just didn't sound right. Chris, what was Dennis's problem? Dennis sounded like he had some engine problems coming off the line. Yeah, I did. I don't know. I think we might have uh, thrown a push rod off, or it could be a couple bad plugs in it. I noticed when I fired up the full to the line, the motor had two dead cylinders, but 
it was too late to try to do anything about it then. You know, after my run before that, I came back into the pit. Everything sounded good. We just fired the motor up, and it was it was weak on two cylinders. But like I say, it was too late to do anything, so I had to give it all I had anyway. That's a strong indication they, they fouled some fuel. Fuel fouled the plugs is what it's called. He said the engine was running good. Now, this is the guy coming to the line now that's been fighting that same problem, not with two cylinders, with all eight cylinders. On the other side of the coin, the equalizer, they've got it all figured out. Gary Cook is sitting there like a Cheshire cat with a grin from ear to ear. He thinks he's got this field covered tonight with the equalizer. Well, and certainly he's a prohibitive favorite in this race. Kwasniewski and Buffalo Trimmer just trying to get a good run in because he's having such huge problems with that new gasoline engine. And this race, as expected, was all equalizer. Greg Holbrook will be our final semifinalist as he gets a fairly easy victory over the Buffalo Tremor. So our final four, King Kong against No Problem, Bigfoot against Equalizer, three Fords, but one awfully good Chevrolet. Watch the driver when they land. You're right, man. He takes a beat. Yeah, big time. But the young man can take it, and he'll be back for more a little later. When we come back, it's the pull-off from Fishersville. Stay tuned. The big, bad, monster horsepower modified tractors head to the pull-off. The four who have made it this far. Tim Engler's Mission Impossible, John Powell's Powell Special, Mike Piper's Just Add Dirt, John Heilman's Ohio Gold. You talk about an all-star lineup, that's what you have in this pull-off. I'm going to give you a comparison. These four tractors in a pull-off are equivalent to half the starting field for the Indianapolis 500 going horsepower to horsepower. That's what you're looking at in this sport. First up, the man who won the national championship a year ago, Tim Angler, Mission Impossible. He'll set the standard the others have to try and beat. In this sport, you re-pull the other, you full pull. Engler was the first out with the Chevrolet combination. He'll set the distance like you say then. Bad boy John Powell's gonna go after him. 228 and an 11, Scott. That's what they gotta beat. It's a much tougher sled to pull, and we really have no way of knowing right now, Army, just how good or how bad that pull was. What they did, they added 2,000 pounds dead weight to the sled. A moment ago, they banged it out the back. 2,000 pounds, pulled in shy. Here's where we'll find out just how good Engler's pull was. John Powell, the Powell pulling special out of Apex, North Carolina. John Powell grew up around this part of the country. He knows this play, I believe, better than any of these other drivers. If anybody has a niche up on him, it's going to be Powell. This guy can win this thing today on this run, but he's got to do it right now with the Chrysler engines. Look at all the heat coming out of the engines, but Powell's making that horsepower. He does it. Goes to the lead. The white line showed you where Engler was, and he pulled the sled past it. 242.9. Outstanding. By 14 feet, Powell has gone past the reigning champion in this sport. You notice all the white smoke coming out of the bottom of the engine. That's overflow or blubber tubes, they call it. But he was just making old-time horsepower there. Let's find out from John Powell exactly what changes he made before he went to the pull-off. Uh, we moved the 100 pound off of the front to the back because we knew we wasn't going quite as far. The starting line was awful slick. We thought the one could get the best start would go to furthest. The distance is 242 and 9 inches. Mike Piper and Just Add Dirt will try to beat it right here. He said the trick was on the starting line. Piper having all the horsepower he could possibly want, but the starting line's what taught him Piper close. But no cigar today. He'll end up in the number three spot, at least for the moment, behind both Powell and Engler. 222 and three inches for Mike Piper. Let's look at it again, Army. Again, you see Piper coming out, lifting the front. It settles back down. Piper makes a good run. It's just not going to be good enough to get into this type of competition today. I'm anxious to see what our next puller is going to do. If anybody can figure this track out, it'll be this man right here. John Heilman, been around this game for a long, long time, Scott. Real student of it as well. Really studies tracks hard. You'll watch him come out in earlier pulling classes whenever they pull trucks before the tractor. Really studies everybody who hits the track. He studies this whole track, 300 feet long, about every 10 feet. Let's see what's going to happen. Relying on the Chevrolet engine for horsepower. No, John Powell's going to win with the Chrysler. 
gets the job done from North Carolina. You see the distance for Ohio Gold. That'll put in third. John Powell wins the first modified tractor points pull of 1990. Tim Angler starts out the season in second. Ohio Gold third. Mike Piper ends up in the fourth spot. And Freddie Freeman rounds out the top five. There it is, the winning pole of John Powell and Powell pulling. The monsters are back right after this. Army Armstrong, Chris Chapman, and the greatest superstars in monster truck racing today. All with you here on Tough Track from the Wood County Fairgrounds, Bowling Green, Ohio. First semifinal, no problem against King Kong. Three Fords and a Chevy in the semifinal, but a lot of people are going to like the chances of the Chevy to win it all. Boy, the far side, look at that. Steve Kane is almost destined. Now, John Moore runs a good race, a little bit out of shape on the end, but... Kane's longer wheelbase and more aggressive driving style is going to put him in for the final for the first time in a long time. I'll tell you, Army, I said a lot of people are going to like the Chevy chances, but this Ford King Kong is just dominating people. Watch this, and again, remember, no problem has run very, very strong tonight. Yeah, John Moore, you know, that's nothing to blink at, but this kid out of Texas, man, is just, like I say, it's like it's a new driver, but it's just a new truck. King Kong is dominating right now. He has to win one more race. We get a good isolated look at it. Well, even though he's got problems with the engine, Scott, he's still going to be a player. He's going to that final. Just say no written across the back and a victory in front of him. Steve Kane. Well, it's going to be short and sweet. Whatever you're doing, just keep doing it. Yeah, it's going to be a tough finals. Uh, I'm just going to go out there and just do the same thing I've been doing all night. Just go out there and hold it wide open. That's what you're doing, just driving full boogaloo. That truck won't do no more, Army. Army, I'll tell you what, uh, main story here is, is what you were just looking at across his hat. Janky engines, because he has got horsepower. Yeah, since he teamed up with Janky, he went to the head of the class. Steve Kane, King Kong, headed for the Monster Smash Finals. He'll race either Bigfoot or Equalizer, and what a crucial points battle that's going to be. What he's doing is showing a tech official from TNT that the engine is okay. There's no major problem. They see the same liquids we do. They're not going to let him run till they're satisfied. They're satisfied. Let's go back to the starting line. The top two in points for the season. We have documented how John Pyant and Bigfoot 4 is just trying to stay close so that when Andy Brass brings Bigfoot 8 back on the circuit, he's got a shot to run equalizer down for the championship. I'll tell you, Pyatt could do brass no bigger favor than to upset equalizer right here. Right now, the equalizer's got one job to do. He's got to drill big foot on the starting line. Close at half track. Scott, what does it look like? It's going to be equalizer on the second half. Big foot close fast, but not quite enough. Equalizer holds on for a very, very narrow victory as Greg Holbrook celebrates his 19th birthday and what could have been a real subdued celebration after the races. I'm talking about his birthday party. If he'd have gotten beat here by Bigfoot, they would not have been eating any birthday cake with smiles on their faces. This right here could be the run. This could be the battle that wins the war for you. Because he put Pyan out of this thing twice tonight in this point chase. Boy, I'll tell you, so John Pyan's Bigfoot really gave it an outstanding run, but not enough to track down the rookie sensation driving the world championship truck. You see an isolation of Greg Holbrook winning it in the Equalizer Chevrolet. He goes to the Monster Smash Final. Army's caught up with both drivers. Let's go to him right now. Greg, 19th birthday. I've asked everybody around here what you did on your 19th birthday. None of them had the opportunity to do what you're going to do. You gonna make any changes or you're just gonna keep going with it? We're just gonna keep going with it. Um, we got lane choice again. I'm gonna run the left lane again. It's been working for us good all night. Truck transmission's beginning to fade a little bit on us. I just hope it holds up one more time. That might work for you because he has been running the left lane. You're gonna push him over someplace he hasn't been. That that could hurt him. Yeah, I believe he qualified in the right lane though, and he ran pretty good there. So it's just it's gonna be a heck of a race. We'll let you go right now. We're gonna bring John over here. John, nothing to be ashamed of. You had the. Uh, a acclaimed Bigfoot truck was running awfully good. When you go against this kid, you just got to do that. Got to go. Yeah, we uh, had definitely held to the floor. Uh, the, the last couple cars and the first set of cars, a little bit rough. It threw me around a little bit, and that's where he got a little bit of advantage. We gave him the best run we could, and it was a good close race. Now, you know he's doing what he has to do because you guys are going to be coming out with that new high-tech high -tech truck in a couple of months. He's got to get as many points as he can get now because you guys are going to be coming like a fast closing locomotive here. Yeah, that's my uh, main objective is to stay as close to him as I can. Uh, I tried to beat him that run. We came really close, but I want to make it a little bit easier on Andy if I can. Kind of shadow boxing with him tonight, huh? Yeah, we, uh, we, I'm glad we got the truck to run. You know, Ford Bigfoot ran as well as
we could do is I'm glad with it. Happy with it. Everybody working now on their truck for the Monster Smash Final. Last minute preparations on the equalizer. Owner Gary Cook, his driver Greg Holbrook. The same preparations going on in the King Kong pit. Steve Kane and his crew getting ready for the Monster Smash Final. Chevrolet, known as the Equalizer, current point leader, reigning world champ against the King Kong Ford. Watch for the light in the right-hand side of your screen. It's gone green, and that means it's showtime. It's a lot of time to shoot them balls. King Kong, how about a Kong takes the win? They pull it off the scrap heap, the antique, one of the original monster trucks. They only brought it back because their newer truck had to be rebuilt. And King Kong shows it's still as good as they come. Steve Kane drives it to a victory in the Monster Smash Final over the Equalizer. And he did it impressively. He beat the top of the class today. He beat them all day long. No gimmies. This has got to be one of his best days ever. A good heads-up run by both drivers. The transmission may have faded a little bit in the far lane. But King Kong just aired it out all the way over the vehicles. It was just his day. He was on a roll. Isolated on the equalizer. Did you see anything wrong with the run, Army? No, but I did hit the RPM. You see the engine start to free wheel there. The RPMs would indicate the transmission might have gone away on that truck. We'll check. So the equalizer gets a second this time around. It'll still help him in points because he put Bigfoot away in the semifinal round. Another look, and this time we'll have Ken Kong closer to us. And let's kind of just keep our eyes peeled on a great run by Steve Kane. Okay, watch for smoke on the blue truck. That'd be an indication. If you want to play. Yeah, the transmission, I believe, started to fade. I'm not taking anything away from Kane. That was a beautiful run by Carl. There's Steve coming your way, Army. Well, Steve Kane, congratulations. You took a truck that what are you supposed to be here and you win with it. Yeah, the truck ran real good tonight. Uh, I feel that I would have done it last week if the drive shafts and everything would have stayed in there, but uh, that's old stuff, old news by now, but uh, the truck run real good tonight. You did a good job of driving it, too. We got to give credit where credit's due. Let me get this youngster in here real quick. 19 years old, congratulations, happy birthday to you. Uh, nothing to be ashamed of, this guy, just, this was his night. Yeah, his truck was just working real good on this track. Our transmission went out that run. I'll tell you what, both of you guys got a lot to be proud of. You're gonna make a good old phone call back to Texas, and they're gonna be doing the old Texas two-step in your favor tonight, congratulations. Thank you, Armin. The celebration will also be a high-spirited one for Greg Holbrook at the old birthday party because there's nothing to be disappointed about with a second-place run that accomplished a lot. In other words, he put 10 more points on the lead that the equalizer has over Bigfoot in the season standing. It's now a 40-point difference. The Auto Value Crunch, Carolina Crusher, Awesome Kong, still sitting in the top five as they were earlier as far as positioning. But the thing is, equalizer's opening the gap just a little bit. Hey, Gravedigger strengthens his hold on the number seven spot, Nightlife had really been coming after him as of late. And Buffalo Tremor gains a little ground on the outlaw Ford trying to get to the number nine spot in the competition. Lots of smiles, lots of handshakes around Steve Kane, who pulls out the old truck and gets it done in King Kong. And Army, uh, you know, some of those guys, they, they don't like to put the old trucks away. And there you see why. Maybe you can bring it back and win another race. Scott, when you're hot, you're hot. He is number one tonight. He's got a big smile. We'll look at it one more time as we tell you that there's more sensational action coming your way in one week right here on Tough Track. For Army Armstrong and Chris Chapman, I'm Scott Douglas, and we'll see you next week with the most powerful monster trucks in the world here on Tough Track. Donald Trump took Manhattan by surprise, and now you can become a part of that glamour. Look for the all-new Trump card starting Monday mornings at 10.30 here on TV2. Next, Trouble Stalks Nick on the Big Valley here on TV2.